Let's go to Revelation 2, 5. This is where Christ is speaking to the spiritual churches. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Removing the candlestick. Speaking to the churches. These are the seven churches he's speaking to. Keep that in mind. These are not bodies of unbelievers. I mean, remove your candlestick. Let's see here. Revelation 2, 10 through 11. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So that right there is showing that there are people within the churches, within the body that have found their way in that could still experience the second death. Revelation 2, 22. Now this is a great one because I have contended for the faith with some of the once saved, always saved folks and they say... Uh, you know, they will often respond with, uh, show me in the Bible, you know, there's no place where it says repent of your sins. You know, repentance is just a, a change of mind, metanoia, uh, which if you follow the train of thought, change of mind from what? What was your mind prior to what it was changed to. Is it just literally for going from belief to, or unbelief to belief? Is that the change of mind? Is that repentance? No. That there is that aspect of it, just like there's two different kinds of fear. There's two different kinds of works in the Bible. Uh, there's two different kinds of law, you know? There's the, the Old Testament Mosaic law. Then there's the, the law of faith, which we'll get into. Okay, there, there are, there's always two sides to these things. And then, you know, so they'll say, Jesus never said, repent of your sins. Yes, he did. 2, 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So there is Jesus literally using repenting of your deeds. Something that you're doing, you need to turn away from. Okay, once again, I'll go over this one time here, um, just a little bit. Maybe it's definitely a, um, another message for another time. This is probably running pretty long. I can't see how long it's running, so, and I am uh, super uh, tired from the today. <laughs> uh, but praise God, I, I, I have no qualms over it. I, I'm just throwing it out there in case anybody else is drifting off. Um, Obedience is not works. Okay? 
works is doing something, believing, and I'm talking works, feeding people, uh, praying a hundred times a day, right? Uh, going and putting ashes on your forehead, things that, you know, you're doing, you're actively doing to, in, in some way to obtain your salvation, okay? We cannot obtain, or we cannot ourselves obtain work towards our salvation. It is a free gift. We were given it, right? But it has a condition to it. That free gift has a condition. Count the cost. That condition is obedience, as it always has been. We have propitiation through the blood of Christ, which is just and, and will always, you know, it's faithful to wash us of those sins when we repent and turn away and ask for forgiveness. But obedience, that's actually the act, you know, when, it, when turning away from your sins, turning away from the practice of sins, uh, that, are, that are found on those lists we went over in Galatians and, and 1 Corinthians. Turning away from those things, the Bible says that these people who practice these will not inherit the kingdom. That's the opposite of a work. That is doing, that is not doing something, okay? It doesn't say negative works, you know? No, no man is justified by his works, you know? We're, we're by grace, uh, and we'll get into that, you know, not by works, but by faith, you know, uh, by grace, through faith, we are justified, okay? Um, obedience, though, follow, heeding the commandment of Christ to turn, how is that a work? How is that a work? You're you're having to fight the flesh to not do that, right? Um, and only through Him residing in you are we able to do that. Otherwise, we have we're powerless. Now, um, and it's His victory anyways. When He takes something from me that I was involved in or doing, that's His victory. That is His victory. It's not mine. Not to boast in, to brag. It's literally, I get to turn around and let people know about his victory in me and over me. Like he overcame me, my myself. He overcame me. Amen. You know, and I get to take that, his overcoming me, his victory over me, and go and, and tell someone else that and glorify him. It's his it's all to his glory. So let's get back into this here. That's a good one. Remember that. Revelation two twenty two. Revelation three five. He that overcometh I should have had that one up there. The same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So you can be blotted out of the book of life. God forbid. Revelation three fifteen through 16. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I don't, I don't know about you folks, but I do not want to be spewed out of his mouth. That doesn't sound like a good thing to me. And I've had people contend with me on that, that, 
It, just because he spews you out of his mouth. And when you look at that word spew in the Greek, it's vomit. I've had people tell me, well, that doesn't say you lose your salvation, though. Okay. I mean, whatever you gotta, you know, whatever it is for you, you know, as long as it's, as long as you're moving toward the light and, and letting the Holy Spirit convict you on things and, you know, that's one thing I want to say. Like, I don't, I'm only bringing up these scriptures to combat that doctrine because for me, you know, I, I grew up. You know, when I came to uh, the faith, that wasn't, you know, that was the doctrine I was given. Um, once saved, always saved. And I stayed in that understanding for 13 years. And I was a wicked, reprobate uh, sinner in perpetual, just will all-out sin those 13 years. And it wasn't until I, I, you know, that verse we saw about, you know, some say with fear, right? It wasn't until I met um, or heard a street preacher preaching that, that fiery indignation, if you will, you know, uh, that I actually started to, to question the modern churches. And I actually started to read the Bible and get into the Word myself. Like, really? It says that? And so, uh, and I literally, like, felt the Holy Spirit like, move in when I started to see that and accept that I needed to change. I needed that. And anytime, it's sad, because anytime that, you know, uh, that, that once saved, always saved doctrine would come in during that, that time, you know, these past three years, you know, and I, I understand that doctrine. I get it. But... The Bible says that we're supposed to consider the goodness and the severity of the Father. You have it's a it's a balanced gospel. You know, Jesus spoke of hell seventy five percent of his ministry while he was here. There's a reason for that, and so you know to to just get all lovey dovey with it, you know, it didn't do me an ounce of good. Um, the, the true water, you know, yes, that seed was planted, but boy, it was holding on to like the thinnest of roots. The thinnest of roots. I'm surprised it didn't rot. It almost did. It almost withered. It almost got snatched away in a moment that was so trying in my life uh, that I... Uh, I'm surprised I, I came through, but that water came in, you know, the Lord gave the increase, but that water was those street preachers, and hearing verses preached from the Bible that I didn't even know were in there, because they're not preached in the churches, uh, verses, hearing verses that, you know, maybe I'd read over, but until you hear them spoken, you know, faith comes by hearing. It doesn't say faith comes by reading, right? So, I'm just going to leave you with that. Uh, let's see here. Revelation 3.19. I'm sorry if I'm getting a little loopy here, folks. Uh, hang on here. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. Let's go now to, um, we're going to finish out this section in Hebrews 10, 
38 through 39. Oh, I knew it was right there. Hebrews 10, 38 through 39. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. So we have, I have one more, just one more section here to go over with you guys. So, the Lord God has brought the world salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. And we've never been alone. We have the Word and the Holy Spirit to guide us in this walk that the Lord has before us. So let's take a look at some more scriptures that will show us how to get to the destination that Jesus desires for us. Of course, we have Luke 13.3. Now, I know that one, so I won't need to turn there. Um, Jesus says... Uh, Well, you'd think I know it. Uh, and I say unto you, unless ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Repent. Okay? Um, it's just like any parent telling their child the proper way to be in this world. It's for their own good. First John one six through nine. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Okay, yes, that is the... that Those sins we talked about, the ones that aren't right there in the forefront... We do sin unconsciously. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Very true. I do not claim to be without sin. What I do claim is that I am not making a practice out of those things that the Bible says not to make a practice out of. Okay? If I stumble in any of those areas, you better believe I'm asking for forgiveness. Titus 2, 11 through 14. Titus two Okay. For the grace of God, right? Saved by grace through faith. Here's the grace. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. 
Yes, it is his righteousness that we seek after. We are conforming our ways to his ways. Right? If he was righteous, he becomes our righteousness. But a lot of folks will use that to say that that they're just they're righteous just because he was righteous and, and they're holy because he was holy. But they're not walking the walk. Let's see. Second Timothy three twelve through seventeen. You know, I'm sure, I, I don't know if I've got this verse in there anywhere else, but, you know, speaking to that same thing, you know, the Bible says that uh, he who doeth, he who does, makes a practice of righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. He who does not practice righteousness is, is not of him. I'm almost positive I've got that in there. But maybe I left that out. That's the verse that's speaking, uh, you know, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are made manifest. By that, by what I, what I just quoted, he who doeth not righteousness, right? So, Doeth is an action word, a verb. Doeth, not he who, you know, accepts Christ's righteousness for his own and doesn't act upon his faith and is actually doing wickedness, yet he's still... Some, somehow by that doing righteousness? Doing what is right? How does that make any sense? Still gets me. Let's see. 2 Timothy 3, 12 through 17. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Now, I will point out, at this point in time, uh, the men who were, that the Lord was using to write these books, they were all Jewish they had all been under the law. They all knew what... So when they're talking about, you know, thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, they're writing about the Old Testament, the Holy Scriptures. They didn't have a canon at the time of these things, um, of the New Testament. But we, we understand that they both work for the same good of man and women. So when it says, which are able, so thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, I still, you know, in my day, in, in the year 2018, I, Jonathan Heinen, know that it's referring to Old Testament and New Testament. You know, I can take the Holy Scriptures as a whole. But they are speaking to the Old Testament. So, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable 
for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why would we need instruction in righteousness? That's already given to us. That's already been allotted to us through his blood, right? You know, it's all Christ. And it really is. I'm not saying anything different from what the scriptures say. It's all Christ. We have no righteousness outside of the vine, but we have to abide in the vine. Otherwise, you are depending on your own righteousness. You know, um, but the Bible still does call you to, to walk in the light as he is in the light. Be holy as he is holy. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. That the man of God may be perfect, there we go, through thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, I have the last section here. Um, and, of course, it's nothing small. If you guys are, are still there with me, uh, I, I love you, brothers and sisters. And uh, tomorrow is going to be a fun one, that's for sure. Um, so if you don't mind, before I get into this, I'm going to go wet my palate because my throat is so dry from having uh, preached earlier today. Just take a little sip here. Oh. Okay. So, after after all that, right? We just went over all of these verses that that outline um, salvation and uh, you know what his righteousness looks like, what that light looks like. And what it should appear to look like through us. Um, and so I wanted to go over what does faith look like, right? So as my brother Leon discussed uh, in, a, in a prior video, faith is actualized in actions and deeds. And it grows as it is nurtured. Without nurture, it will regress. Let's look at the similarity between James 2.14 through 20 and Matthew 13, 3 through 9. So James 2.14 through 20. James 2. What does it what does it profit my brethren though a man say he hath faith and have not works can faith save him if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warmed and filled Notwithstanding, he give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So let's compare that with Matthew 13, 3 through 9. Matthew. Matthew. 
Matthew 13, 3, okay, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no depth, deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and choked them. But others fell onto, into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So we see there, there are four different types of seed, right? And what's great, the, the way that it finishes out. So out of those four seeds, right, which means a seed got in, a seed was planted, and it shows you the four ways that that seed, well, three of those ways, it doesn't come to fruition. Only one has that good soil, and it gets watered, and it grows and produces, right? The other ones, choked out, snatched away, withered away. Uh, one of them never even planted. I believe that was the, the first one. You know, um, yeah, it never even took. And the fowls came and ate them up. And, you know, he finishes, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. What's great about that, um, I've had the opportunity to tell some folks this, but, you know, when you have the wheat and the tares, right? Well, in appearance, uh, you know, only wheat, that's how you know the difference. Only wheat has ears. And so, in appearance... You know, when they're at a certain stage, until they reach maturity, they look almost identical, okay? They're, uh, but at, at full maturity, right, you have the, the wheat, we'll, we'll put wheat on the, well, the, we'll go your right, okay? We'll go your right. Uh, well, maybe that's, okay, I don't know. I'm having a, it's like this thing is tripping me out. Okay, so... Here's the wheat, here's the tear. At maturity, because the wheat actually has an ear, as they call it, the head, it gets weighty, right? So at maturity, the wheat bows down. However, the tear stands up straight in defiance, right? It's not going to bow. And that's how they know that. <laughs> come and lob the tares and the wheat is preserved because the wheat bowed him with ears let him hear so I faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that's why I'm, we're going over so many different scriptures so that, that the seed can go in and, and that faith can be grown in the way that it was meant. You know, because the modern churches, they just dance around so much of this. Um, so let's take a look. This is, these are the verses I've lined up for us that, that go and show what, um, what faith looks like, okay? Um, 1 Timothy 1, 5 through 6. One, five through six. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, which is just like, uh, I don't know, flapping speech. 
<laughs> Not that that cleared it up anymore, but um, let's go to Second Peter three fourteen. So a good conscience, right? You want to have a good conscience before the Lord. You can't do that with a lot of guilt and shame, which we should feel if we are involving ourselves in things that we should not. So, how do we get a good conscience before the Lord? We walk in the Spirit. So, 2 Peter 3.14 Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Amen. That is what we move towards. Now let's go to Luke 8.21. Luke. I need to get some tabs on my Bible. I know I bought some at one point, but... I kind of feel like I'd be cheating uh, at this point, but, you know, like I can find my way around it pretty good, but there are those, like, little tiny books in the New Testament where, you know, like, Jude, which I now know is just before Revelation, but, you know, like, Timothy and Titus, they're literally, like, a page, uh, a couple pages, and so, like, if you if you skip too far one way and the other way, it's, it just gets difficult when you're actually trying to teach. Um, so we're looking at Luke 8.21. Yes. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Amen. Like that's the faith right there. Men and women, his family, those in his family, hearing his word and doing it. John six forty seven. So you guys just bear with me a little bit here. Um, just a few more scriptures and... You know, that will conclude this message, but um, just thank you guys again for for watching this, if you've made it this far. Uh, this is, it's a pleasure for me. It really is a joy. John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Amen. Believe it. Now, you know, when you believe, it's it goes, you know, it's the same thing with faith. I mean, I'm trying to think at, at this hour how to, to really bring that to life. Um, believe. If you really believed in something, it would there would be some kind of indication in your life that you believed it. When, when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord God in the flesh, and you believe that he, I mean, so you understand who he is, right? A holy God. And you believe that. You believe the things that he says. You believe the things that he asks of you. You are believing in him. You're not believing on... You know, there can be people in the world that they believe that uh, historically Jesus walked the earth. Is that the kind of belief? That's not the kind of belief he's talking about. It's that belief. It's that faith that goes beyond, you know, anything this world has to offer in understanding. It's like, I, I believe. 
And there is nothing that will separate me from that. John 14, 23 through 24. John 14, 23 through 24. I kind of feel like uh, the bingo caller right now. The way I double up on that. <laughs> I9. Yeah, it's 9 under the eye. Let's see. John 14, 23 through 24. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Yes. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Amen. First John 2, 3-6 through six. Let's go there. First John 2, 3 through 6. And again, hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected, hereby knowing that we are in him. So he that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked that's faith that's faith let's go to Titus 1 16 they profess they know God but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. So, they profess to know him, but in works they deny him. Hmm. Let's go to... 1 John 3, 3 through 10. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth, does righteousness, is righteous. Even as he is righteous, he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Brothers and sisters, are you allowing for the Holy Spirit to move through you and destroy the works of the devil that are ingrained in your flesh. That comes with crucifying the flesh. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, 
neither he that loveth not his brother. Let's go to Galatians 5.24. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That was 25. Galatians 5, 24 through 25. Let's go to Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Be not deceived... God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So again, I just, in love, I ask all of us, are we sowing to the Spirit? Or are we sowing to the flesh? We have to make those distinctions. Philippians 2, 12 through 16. So we have Philippians 2, 12 through 16. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to do will, or to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So indeed, you know, it says we in this nation we should be shining as lights in the world. You know, it says amongst a crooked and perverse nation. Well, how are we going to shine if we're crooked and perverse? What does that light look like? Let's go to Luke 13, 23 through 24. Luke 13, 23. Then said unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. So that's, you know, what is the faith? What does it look like? Strive to enter in, enter in at the straight gate. Many, there's only a few, many are going to try to go in through um, the broad and wide gate. Let's turn here to Matthew ten twenty two. Matthew ten twenty two. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. You have to endure. There's going to be a lot of struggle in this life. Endure. 
And that's what fellowship is for. That's what the body is for, to build you up, to see that we, we endure. You know, Christ said the same thing in Revelation. He that overcometh, he that endures to the end. We are at the end, folks. If there is ever a time to buckle down, buckle down in his word, buckle down in the life and in the truth and in the way, now is the time to do that. All right, Romans 3, 27. Romans 3, 27. Right here. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. We're talking about the Mosaic law, the Levitical law, the law of ordinances. We live by the law of faith, by which verses we just went over what that faith looks like in a child of God. Okay, let's take a look here. So I just wanted to finish, I want to finish on two verses, okay? I have two more for you. Um, Hebrews 11, 24 through 27. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. So Moses himself, you know, he was, he had riches. He had, he was surrounded by paganism. And he saw, like at some point he saw like what it was. And he knew the Lord's way was better. And so he forsook, you know, he was being invited to parties to go with, you know, the Pharaoh um, being, you know, the, the son-in-law. Um, and it, he didn't want it. No, oh, son of Pharaoh's daughter, sorry. I knew I had something wrong there. You know, he had the kingdom at his fingertips, but he knew whose kingdom that was, not the Father's. So let's go here to James 4, 14 through 15. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. If the Lord will. We don't know, folks, what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, we praise Him when we wake up in the morning. I praise Him at night when I make it home. I 
praise him throughout the day for his kind, his goodness, you know, his kindness and, and grace and mercy. Um, you know, this, this world and our flesh, the flesh thinks in terms of now. The spirit speaks to eternity. And, you know, just as I was preaching earlier today, you know, we have 60 to 80 years in this life. In terms, in the face of eternity, you know, I don't know if you can see this, but, you know, I have it drawn, drawn here. Like, this is your life right here, this little dot, and it's much smaller than that, right? This is the past. There's you, your little dot. And there's eternity, and it just moves on and on, and it never ends. There's you. So this is the time to lay down your life here. See? You lay it down here. Right here. See? You pick up your cross here. You give that back to the one that gave it to you. And in return, he gives you this. Eternal life, folks. To be with our good Lord. Just for an exchange for this short one. And it's a good exchange. You know? It's a... Uh, a beautiful exchange. You know, his 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 yoke is easy, and his burden is light. And we need more brothers and sisters professing to more brothers and sisters the truth about that. So, folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with that this evening, and uh, know that I love you in Christ. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to present to you the gospel. Um, I know it was a big old whopping message, but uh, there was a lot of things that, you know, I wanted to, I, I had on my heart to cover. And so I put the, you know, the shortened version of the gospel right in the middle of the video and just gave you the, the fullness, right? Uh, who knows? Maybe I won't get another opportunity to, to, to teach, to, to present scriptures to you and to get in the word with you. Um, I don't count tomorrow. I'm here right now. I don't look a week out. I don't look a month out. I don't, I don't have that time. In my, in my mind, that time is not mine. It's the Lord's time. He's going to tell me what to do with it. So, love you guys, and I uh, hope you have a, a blessed day tomorrow, uh, which is in probably just a few hours here. So, um, bless you, Brother Dean St. John. If uh, you are watching, man, uh, out there in the Philippines, uh, bless you, my sister Kiera, that is in Australia. Uh, bless you, my brother Christopher, that is in the UK. And uh, the Lord is, he's turning up in brothers and sisters all over this flat earth. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And I, I, that was prophesied in the Bible that in the last days, the Lord would pour his spirit out on his sons and daughters. And that's exactly what we're seeing, folks. People are waking up. People are becoming privy to the ways of Satan. That people are, brothers and sisters are being made wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So, alright, well Jesus bless you guys and have a good day.